Hello, in this new video we're going to talk about the UI bars in Aquaco. So there are different kinds of bars that you can use. I'm going to show you like the three main that you use and there is another one which is the search bar that you may not you know use all the time but you you we, we are going to have a look at it. So when I design in Aquaco I usually add the status bar which is over there then I add a navigation bar and note that when I add those bars they are automatically placed on the canvas at the right position and I'm gonna add also a tab bar and for this example I'm going to use this toolbar so note that the toolbar and the tab bar are supposed to be located at the bottom of the screen that is somehow the um, the behavior your user are expecting from a tab bar to be located at the bottom of the screen so that's that should be correct now for the toolbar sometimes you can use a toolbar at the top of the screen and don't use a navigation bar and this is uh, stuff for developer I'm not gonna get into that field it's not my business I am a designer so I will stick with that so let's have a look at this bar on top here which is the navigation bar and I'm gonna reduce the size of both I'm gonna group them so I can manipulate both at the same time I'm gonna put it there so I can see clearly what's uh, what's happening so as you can see the style of the bar can be below statue bar or not below but in the new iOS 7 you know paradigm um, Apple made it so that the status bar which was before black it had three different states white black and that kind of uh, gradient gray um, now it's translucent and it has only two style which is dark content or light content and as you guessed it if I am here using a dark I mean a solid color the light content will you know will shine Whereas when I use the other one, the dark, con the dark content will be better. So let's have a look at the navigation bar here. As you can see on the left side, I have this back button. So the back button is a pretty unique button. In this case, we're going to have a look at what's, what's going on here. So here I have the back button. Note that the navigation bar is the only bar that can have a back button like that, I mean. So if you don't want the, the back button, you switch that off. If you want a back button, you can switch that on. And note that when I go inside the back button, I can change the name of it. So for example, I can put that home here. And it's all right. And then I can enable the link. And right now you see it's written smart back. If I touch this, it tells me that a single tap with one finger is going to screen target it. Is the smart back button will find the screen you come from and go back to it. You don't have to set a target screen. What if you want to set a, a, a target screen, a different target screen? Sometimes it happens. So you just have to tap the button which, which is on the upper right corner of this popover, which is simple. When I do that, I break the smart behavior, the smart back behavior, and I transform it into a regular simple link. We're gonna see that in another video, just to tell you that this is how you can change that. I'm gonna bring it back to smart back. And now I'm going on the title, I can change the title. So I'm gonna put like some Apple are good and now I can change also here the, the right button so the right button I can either use text right now you know it's it's uh, written down and there is an enable state so I'm gonna move this around so I can see what's happening clearly as you can see the enable state is like is it active or not active I can also enable the link on that particular object by default, the link is not, you know, um, switched on, so it's not a problem. You can just go there, change the link, 
and you will see that it's pretty cool because after that I can change the order of the button I'm gonna see that in, in, a, in a moment I can also change for an icon so I'm gonna select an image and this beautiful library of iOS 7 custom made pixel perfect icons and I'm gonna put it in the enable state note that those icons they are not available as standalone icons you can use it only when you are in the bars which which are the navigation bar the toolbar and the tab bar nowhere else just keep that in mind we're working we want to bring the the, the icons trust me it's not as easy as it sounds so a little bit more patient here will be greatly appreciated so I can select the target uh, I'm gonna select the target like for the working with images for example can change the fade option we're gonna see that in another video this is the link options just gonna show you that can add another button gonna select a new icon select an image put the folder here enable the link select the target like this and then what's really cool about AppCooka is that I have those two icons perfectly you know fit on the navigation bar and I can go there oops I'm gonna move a little bit like that I'm gonna go there I'm gonna put edit and this is where the magic comes from so when you want to change the order of the icon and trust me you're gonna do that all the time this is yeah, I think that's the job of a designer to change the place of the stuff. So that's basically it. And the toolbar, which is here, works almost the same, but it has this different option. So we're going to have a look at them. And here you will see that the buttons in the toolbar can have, you know, different kind of uh, stuff. When we are in the navigation bar, it can be an icon or a text, but here, look, it can be a space. And the space can be auto width or have a very fixed amount of space, which is very cool when you want to have those, you know, five different icons in the middle and two on each side. You can do that really easily because you can put the auto width like this. I'm gonna add more like this. Then I can edit, um, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna change to auto width, and this one I'm gonna remove it. And look what's happening. I have one icon in the middle, then I have two auto width here, and then I have both icons on the right side and on the left side, which is really cool. I'm gonna remove it, delete, and then I'm gonna have a look at the tab bar options. So again, you can change the tint. Oops, you can change the tint. And as I mentioned earlier, if you don't set a tint by default, the tint is that blue. And this is the default uh, iOS 7 blue tint. And note that here on the property bar, I am on the global option. So if I change this to this red it's going to change all the attribute of all and i don't know why it's not working here then you go to white then you remove the color and then it's working it's it's a little glitch so i'm gonna hide the link for a moment so you can see what's happening here you see all the icons are in red i'm on the general options i'm going to for this green for example and now in my tab bar, I want a different color so I can select the tab bar and change the tint option at the top bar level. So, and that's exactly what's happening here. So the style can be default, black or translucent. For performance, if you have an older iPad, try not to use the translucent. It doesn't bring anything, but it's just prettier, but trust me, you can leave without it. So I will go for the default and then I can change the tab option. So the tab options are really simple. I can change the, um, you know, the title, Apple, then I can add a badge. So for example, two and the badge, as you can see, is like, you know, the notification you can have in the app store saying that you have uh, 
three applications uh, with updates ready and stuff like that. And you have the selected state. So right now it's the apple who has the selected state. Oops. And I can say no, it's uh, the more, more options here who is selected. So now I can also add a link and select a target. And I'm going to select this target. And I don't see the link because I have a hidden link. So what I do when I work with the tab bar is I set up my tab bar on the first screen. Something like this. Then I copy it. So to copy an object, you tap it once. Then you tap again to display the menu popover. Then you copy. Then when you are in the new screen, you tap somewhere. And then you say paste in place and boom. This has been pasted just in place. So, of course, when you do that, the bar should be, you know, placed at the bottom of the screen. But that's pretty much how you do that. Um, do I have something else to tell you here? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, again, you can reorder, you know, the tabs just like you would do uh, on the navigation bar. And oh yeah, one last oh two two more things. Actually, you can have a prompt button. So the prompt is something that is kind of weird. You don't see it very often, but when you see it, it's uh it's important. So that's um for example, it's used in the mail application of Apple. It gives you a little bit more context about what you are doing. So you may find it useful or not, but it's here, so it's up to you to use it or not. And the last one is the search bar. So the search bar has some great options where you have the bookmark button, the cancel button. So basically those are default attributes that you can add or remove when you are in Xcode. So it's really easy for the developer to set it on or off. So it's not a good, uh, a main problem. You have the prompt just like the navigation bar, you can change the title. So I'm going to see search apples. That's it. And then I can change for the style. So I have the black style, the translucent style, the below the status bar and stuff like that. So I can, I can really, you know, change what I want. So if I want to have this yellow background, I can do it very easily. And that's it. Thanks for watching.